How can you make your Zoom go from looking like this to looking like this? Welcome to That Da Vinci Project, where we help you unleash your vision on screen, transforming your mind's eye into masterful edits. My name is Liz Martin, and today I'm going to walk you through exactly how to create a smooth Zoom in DaVinci Resolve. First, we'll make the keyframes for Zoom. If you don't know how to make keyframes, or you want to brush up on the basics, then check out our beginner's guide for DaVinci. Now, let's set the keyframe to where we want the Zoom to start. Then we'll set the keyframe to where we want the zoom to stop. Once you've created the keyframes for zoom and play it back, you may notice that the zoom starts abruptly and ends abruptly, especially if it's a short zoom. But the good news is you can make changes to the way the zoom looks by using the curve editor, also known as the spline editor. The curve editor is located in the bottom right hand corner of your video clip. It's a small curved icon that looks like this. Click the curve editor. The curve editor is designed to give you more control over what your effect looks like. Specifically, you can make adjustments to the keyframes that you just created. You can make the zoom slower, faster, bouncy, or more smooth. So how do we make these changes? Look in the middle of the curve editor and you'll see four small icons. These icons are called Beziers and each Bezier does something different. Currently, these keyframes are set to the linear Bezier. This straight line means that the zoom will be sharp and sudden. And this explains why the zoom currently starts abruptly and ends abruptly. But let's say that you want the animation to be more smooth, specifically more smooth at the end of the zoom. In this case, select the last keyframe by clicking the last dot on the line and then select the Ease In Bezier. This curved line with a dot on the end means that the zoom will be more smooth at the end of the animation. And let's say that you also want the animation to be more smooth at the beginning of the zoom. In this case, select the first keyframe by clicking the first dot on the line and then select the Ease Out Bezier. This curved line with a dot on the beginning means that the zoom will be more smooth at the beginning of the animation. Let's play it back to see how it looks. Looks good. It may seem like you're all done, but not quite. There are still a few things that you need to know. For instance, you may want to zoom into a specific area. In this case, I want to zoom into this person's face. So I'll add keyframes for position. I'll go to the initial keyframe that we created for zoom, and then we'll set the first keyframe for position. Then I'll travel to the last keyframe for zoom and adjust the values for both zoom and position until I get the result that I want. Now I'll play it back to see how it looks. There's a good chance that you'll have the same problem that I have here. It zooms in to the specific area that I want, but it moves the entire frame and reveals some of the empty black space in the background. So why is this happening? It's because we adjusted the keyframes with position instead of anchor point. The problem with using position is that it moves the entire frame, but anchor point gives the program a better understanding of the center or focal point that you're trying to zoom in on. So when you're using ease in, ease out, or other beziers with zoom or rotation, use anchor point instead of position. So we'll remove position and add anchor point. But before we do, you may have noticed that after we made changes to position, multiple lines appeared in the curve editor. Adding keyframes for different values such as zoom, position, or rotation angles creates these adjustable lines. If you want to focus on specific values, use this drop down menu to select or unselect these lines. For instance, 
In this example, if we only wanted to see the lines for zoom, we would unselect position X and position Y. Also, if at any point you don't see the dots on the line, simply click the line and the keyframes will reappear. Now, let's get back to removing position and adding anchor point. I'll remove all of the keyframes for position by clicking reset. Then, I'll go to the last keyframe for zoom and adjust the values for anchor point until the video is positioned where I want. Unlike position, with anchor point, we don't have to set a keyframe. Let's play it back to see how it looks. As you can see, now that we're using anchor point, it zooms in correctly. If you want a more visual experience when you zoom in or out, you can click and drag the motion path line upwards or downwards. This allows you to zoom in or out at the start of the zoom or the end of the zoom. You can also click and drag the middle of the line to zoom in or out at both points along the entire line. If you want to customize the look of your animation even further, you can use the Bezier curve handle. Click a dot on the line and you'll see a handle that looks like this. Click and drag the handle upwards to zoom in. Drag the handle downwards to zoom out. Drag the handle to the left or right to change the speed of the animation. This allows you to experiment with the shape of the curve and customize the zoom to your liking. If you want to revert the curves back to linear, simply highlight all of the keyframes you want to change and then select the linear Bezier option. Let's say that you want your zoom to have a bouncy effect. In this case, you'll need to add a few more keyframes for zoom. In this case, I'll add three more keyframes, alternating between zoom in and zoom out. And instead of adding the ease in and ease out Bezier's to each dot individually, I can save time by highlighting all of my keyframes and selecting the ease in, ease out Bezier. This curved line with a dot in the middle means that the zoom will be more smooth throughout all of the keyframes that you just highlighted and this gives us that smooth bouncy effect. Let's play it back to see how it looks. Looks good. You can also add Bezier curves from the inspector tab. Click the arrow next to zoom so that the playhead moves to the keyframe that you want to change. Next, right click on the red diamond and you'll see a list of Bezier options. When you click on the middle keyframes, you'll see several Bezier options. However, when you click on the first or last keyframes, you'll only see two options. This is where you would choose the Bezier that you want. If you want to remove a keyframe from the curve editor, simply click the arrow so that the playhead moves to the keyframe you want to delete. Then click the diamond icon to remove the selected keyframe. What if you want to apply this smooth zoom effect to multiple layers at the same time? And what if you want it to be more dynamic, zooming in from one area of the frame to the next? For instance, in this example, we have a video clip and two image layers. In this case, instead of applying zoom and adjusting each clip individually, we'll use something called an adjustment layer. Go to the top of the workspace and click Effects. Then click the search icon and type Adjustment Clip into the search bar. Next, click and drag the adjustment clip onto the timeline so that it's positioned above the layers that you want to zoom in on. Make sure that the adjustment clip is the same length as the clips you're going to zoom in on. Now that we have our adjustment clip, we can apply this smooth zoom effect to multiple layers at the same time and zoom in from one area of the frame to the next. However, we can't do that here in the edit page. We can only do this in the fusion page. So right click on the adjustment clip and select 
open in Fusion. The Fusion page is where you can create complex visual effects and motion graphics. And the first thing you'll notice is two squares on a graph. These squares are called nodes. There are several types of nodes and each node does something different. For example, these nodes are media nodes. The media in node represents everything you're bringing into the Fusion page from the edit page. In this case, media in represents the video clip and two image layers that we just created in the edit page. So whenever we make changes to media in, we're actually making changes to the video clip and two image layers in the edit page. We can make changes to the media in node by adding new nodes. In this case, we'll add the transform node. Select the Media In node and then hold down the Shift key and click the space bar. A list of nodes will pop up. Select Transform XF, which stands for Transform Extra Features, and then click Add. You could also simply select Transform from the menu above the graph. You'll notice that there are now three nodes on the graph, Media In, Transform, and Media Out, and they're all connected. Don't worry, in this video, Transform is the only node we'll be working with. The Transform function in the Fusion page operates similarly to the Transform section in the Inspector tab on the Edit page, except here we use Size to zoom and Center to set our anchor point. Since we're going to be making keyframes for this effect, let's open the Spline Editor in the Fusion page. It's at the top of the workspace next to Keyframes. Click the Spline Editor. When the Spline Editor opens, a graph will appear at the bottom. Let's add the first keyframe for our smooth zoom effect. In Fusion, we can control the video playback by moving this red playhead handle located in this small timeline beneath the video. Move the red playhead to where you want the zoom to start. Now, click the diamond beside size and then click the diamond beside center. If you look at the spline editor, you'll notice that there are now two lines on the graph. One line represents the keyframe for size and the other represents the keyframe for center. If at any point you don't see these lines, simply click transform and the lines will reappear. Now, before we add the last keyframe for our first zoom effect, we need to make sure that the animation moves at a steady and consistent pace so that there aren't any long pauses or sudden jumps. This means that each keyframe needs to be the same distance apart. For my animation, I'll put 10 frames between each keyframe. We can do this manually by moving the playhead 10 frames over with the arrow key. Or we can add 10 frames to the frame counter and press enter so that the playhead automatically jumps 10 frames over. After you've moved the red playhead to where you want the zoom to stop, Use size to zoom in or out. Use center to move the clip up or down or left or right. You can make the graph appear longer or shorter. Hover over the frame values and when this tiny icon appears, drag the cursor to the left to make the lines appear shorter. Drag the cursor to the right to make the lines appear longer. If you want to see the entire curve, click the zoom to fit option. Finally, create the smooth effect by highlighting the four keyframes that you just created and then press the letter S. You could also experiment with the shape of the curve by selecting the options in the menu below. Let's play it back to see how it looks. Looks good. Now, let's make it zoom again from this area of the frame 
to another area of the frame. Go to the last keyframe that you created by clicking the last white keyframe marker on the timeline. And then we'll do the exact same thing that we did for the first zoom. Move the playhead to where you want the next zoom to start. Next, click the diamond beside size and then click the diamond beside center. Now, move the playhead to where you want the zoom to stop and then use size to zoom in or out. Use center to move the clip up or down or left or right. We'll click the zoom to fit option to see the entire curve. Finally, create the smooth effect by highlighting only the four keyframes that you just created and then press the letter S. Again, you should only highlight the four keyframes that you just created, not the entire line. Let's play it back to see how it looks up to this point. Looks good. We're just going to add one more smooth zoom. This time, we're going to zoom back out. Again, go to the last keyframe that you created by clicking the last white keyframe marker on the timeline, and then move the playhead to where you want the final zoom to start. Next, click the diamond beside size and then click the diamond beside center. Now, move the playhead to where you want the zoom to stop and then use size to zoom in or out. Use center to move the clip up or down or left or right. In this example, I prefer to manually type in the exact settings that I want, which are the default settings for size and center. I'll click the zoom to fit option to see the entire curve. Finally, create the smooth effect by highlighting the four keyframes that you just created and then press the letter S. Let's play the entire animation to see how it looks. Looks good. If you want to give your zoom a more professional and natural look, you can add motion blur to the animation. Go to the inspector section and select settings. Next, check the box beside motion blur. Finally, you can increase the quality to the level you like. The higher the quality, the more dramatic and noticeable the blur. But keep in mind, the higher the quality, the more likely it is to slow down your computer. If you like this video, like it. If you want to be someone else's hero, share it. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.